Okay, I'm going to do a couple of questions to show how it comes up in exams, and then I'm going to do a separate one about the large data set. So a company is introducing a job evaluation scheme. Points X will be awarded to each job based on the qualifications and skills needed and the level of responsibility. And pay in Y pounds will then be allocated to each job according to the number of points awarded. So the more points you get, I'm guessing, the more pay you get. Before the scheme is introduced, a random sample of eight employees was taken and the linear regression equation of pay was y equals 4.5x minus 47. So the first thing it says is to describe the correlation between points and pay. Well, this is the equation of the line. So we can tell there it's going to be crossing at minus 47 and it's got a positive gradient. So because it's got a positive number for 4.5, it means it is going to be positive correlation. And if we wanted to interpret that, if it asks for interpretation, this would mean that the more points, the more pay. Part B of the question says, give an interpretation of the gradient of this regression line. So what does the 4.5 mean? Well, Remember what we said before, for every increase in x, it's how much y increases. So the interpretation of the gradient says for every additional responsibility point, for every additional point, the pay increases by 4.5. The pay increases by 4.5, but I'm not going to write 4.5. I'm going to say that the pay increases by £4.50. Now it says explain why this model might not be appropriate for all jobs in the company. So if we've got that y equals 4.5x minus 47, well, can you think about maybe a value of x that might make this not seem very sensible? So we could say if a job had a low point score, pay may become negative, which doesn't make any sense. E.g., if x equals 10, y equals 45 minus 47, y equals minus 2, which doesn't make sense. OK, let's have a look at the mark scheme and see if we got this right. So it says for the first bit, because it was just to describe the correlation, we just said positive correlation. We didn't need the interpretation. For every extra point, you get £4.50 more pay. For every additional point, the pay increases by £4.50. And they've said that for points less than 11, it would give pay less than zero, which is ridiculous, which is exactly what we've said here. It's only three marks, but it's three marks we can't afford to lose. Um, and there's lots more detail about all of these bits that you've got here as well. OK, let's have a look at this. Look at this one. It combines some stuff from some other chapters, too. It says the sixth form college has 84 students in year 12 and 56 in year 13. The head teacher selects a stratified sample of 40 students stratified by year group. Describe how this sample could be taken. OK, so first of all, we need to work out the proportions. Um, this is obviously from chapter one. So we've got in total 84 plus 56. 84 plus 56 is going to be... 140. So the with sample size, we want 40 out of 140 multiplied by those in year 12. So I'm going to do 40 out of 140 multiplied by those in year 12. So we want 24 year 12s and we'll do 40 out of 140 multiplied by 56, which is 16 year 13s. And now we need to describe how they're going to be picked. So we would say number the year 12s from 1 to 84. Use a random number generator. To pick 24 year 12s. And number the year 13s from 1 to 56. And again, use a random number generator. To 
pick 16 year 13s. OK, then it says for the let's read this next part. The head teacher is investigating the relationship between the amount of sleep that each student had the night before they took an aptitude test and their performance in the test P marks. For the sample of 40 students, he finds the equation of the regression line is this. With reference to this equation, describe the effect that an extra 0.5 hours of sleep may have on average on a student's performance in the, performance in the aptitude test. So let's just think, we're saying that if S increases by 0.5, what happens? Well, if S increases by one hour, We know that the score increases by 5.60, because this is what the 5.60 gradient actually means. So if S increases, let's just tidy that up a bit. If S increases by 0.5 hours, the score um should increase by 2.8 by 2.8 because half of 5.6 is 2.8 okay part c describe one limitation of this regression model this is then saying that if someone got i don't know let's think if someone slept for 24 hours before the exam they would get a really really high score so maybe we can say something like if someone slept for 24 hours, it would have their score as the highest, which doesn't really make any sense, which seems unlikely. But there's lots of other answers we could say for C, so I'm going to show you the mark scheme. OK, so let's just quickly check we did the random sample bit, right? Label them, as we said, use a random number, random number generator to select 24 year 12s and 16 year 13s, three marks. So here we've got that it's an increase by 2.8 marks. That's great. It's the interpretation of the gradient. And here, lots of different limitations. The model suggests that the longer students sleep, the better they will perform in the test, which is kind of silly. The best performance is predicted for the students who never wake up. So I said it for 24 hours, could have said just never wake up and they'll do the best. The model is only valid between 0 and 24 hours, which is the range of the data. Um, I don't know about that last one. I, I think these first two that we've got here are much better. OK, so we're going to just do one more question now on the large data set, and that's going to be the next video.